Hey guys, coming today with a real quick informational video on 1911s. Just gonna do a quick disassembly and reassembly. These guns I found are a little less intuitive, a little less user friendly than other designs like the Beretta M9, which is so freaking easy. Um, what's the uh, what's the word that um, Tom Cruise uses in Tropic Thunder? I think a, a nutless monkey could do your job. Something along those lines. This thing is super simple, but I'll save that for another video. Today, the 1911, let's break it down. So, and for what it's worth, these things fire the 45 ACP. You can get other ones that are chambered in nine mil. Um, I'm assuming all the takedown is pretty much identical. I have a little one of these in 22, which is like a, what they call it, like a, a five sixth size or an 80% size, whatever. It's a cute little thing by Browning. Um, but takedown is slightly simplified, but essentially identical. So 45 ACPs for what this guy does. This is specifically the SIG 1911, but any mil spec 1911 should take down in the same fashion. So here we go. First of all, drop your mag, check that it's clear. I, uh, the next part, you know, there's a bit open for debate what you want to do. Um, this is the way I do it. I don't use a tool. You can use a tool for this process. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're at least being careful if you're not. I don't use a tool. I've never had a tool. Um, it's a weird thing to say. I've never had a tool. Anyways, you, uh, the tool for disassembly 1911s. Not necessary. Just be careful. This is the, the cap for the recoil spring. Uh, be careful with this. This thing will fire off very quickly. And you don't want that hitting you in the eye or just getting lost. So depress that with enough force to keep it down. Rotate this to the left, it'll swing out further. If you rotate it to the right, it doesn't swing out far enough to get past the lug. So swing it to the right. Gradually let this come up. This is this cap. Pull out your recoil spring. Now you can take this guy, rotate it all the way around to where it comes out. Again, I'm, I'm assuming this is pretty much mil spec for 1911s. There could be some out there that have slight differences. But anyways, um, safety off. Pull this thing back to the disassembly notch, which is this middle notch here. This is the bolt catch or the slide catch, so not that far, but just this other little notch right in there. Then this guy will just pop out. It should be pretty loose, but it'll pop out. Take that out. Now the rest of the slide will just slide right off. There's your frame. This is typically the serialized and controlled part, by the way. In Canada, this is what counts as the firearm. Anyways, I know like other countries like like in Europe they classify the uh, the bolt and the barrel as the firearm. So in those cases, this would be what would be considered the firearm would be more restricted, and that would just be a gun part. So it's interesting how laws change around the world, but that's a bit more of a topic for another video. This is you know what I don't even know what this thing exactly is. Um, it's just kind of an annoying piece that goes in here that you have to catch with the. Uh, I think it's just, I guess this is the guide rod. So <laughs> I probably should probably should know what that is, but uh, for the point of a disassembly video, it's not super important. It's part of the 1911, but then the barrel just comes right out, allowing you easy access to the bolt face, the interior of the slide to clean that out. And of course the barrel itself, Browning's locking lug system. And uh, there you go, that's it. The only thing that's annoying about, the main annoying thing about the 1911s is this annoying little lug. When you put it back together, this is the main thing that you need to watch for, because if you don't do it right, you have to kind of pull it apart again, and it can be a bit frustrating. If you don't do it right, either this pin won't go in or it'll lock up the gun, so. That's it, fully disassembled. Here's all your parts. That's everything. Now let's put it back together. So the way I do this, is essentially identically opposite order. Slide the barrel in. Don't worry about this really too much at this time. And this guy just literally rests with the little crescent face against the barrel. That just can just sit in there just like that. Now I'll mate these together. This little thing, if I do it upside down, this is gonna stick up. So just keep that little guy down. Otherwise, it'll catch the rear of the slide as you're trying to put it back, and obviously, it can't, safety can't be on. What am I getting hung up on here? There we go. Just a little bit of a little bit of resistance to overcome. Uh, once I get to this point, 
I'm gonna keep, nope, I'm going to double check to make sure that my locking lug, you have to see light of day in there, you can see where the locking lug is. This is the most critical part. Once you've got that lined up, take this and just push it in there. If you want to avoid this idiot mark scratch, um, push it more directly in. Don't just roll it up over the frame. Again, you need to have this all the way over so that this can slide in properly. And then just a bit of a pushing up to push this detent in and pushing, pushing down here. That just pops it right in and now it's back. So that's, that's all there is to that. Now you can slide this forward, engage the safety, and you've just got the little thing slopping around inside there. There's your bolt. You wanna put this front cap on first. Slide it all the way over. Recoil spring in. There isn't really, it's, it's just, it's bi-directional. Put it in either way. And then this cap goes on. Again, push it down, maintain pressure, and then just slide this over as soon as you can. And guys, that's it. Function check. <laughs> okay, that was not it. That was what happens if you don't get this little thing lined up properly. No, I'm an idiot. I just left the safety on. She's good. She's good. But that is literally the, the feeling you get if you get this in there and it doesn't connect with that locking lug. It just locks everything up. So um, that's it. Function check. Make sure everything works. And uh, we are good to go. Thanks, guys. Hope that was helpful. I'll do the other videos again soon. Again, the 1911 is just a little tricky if you're not super familiar with them. And even me, I have to kind of like sometimes scratch my head if I haven't taken one apart in a while. But there you go. Thanks again. See you next time.